um, when it comes to ordering of fractions, there are three major ways to look at fractions, uh, ordering fractions, comparing fractions. And so there are three major ways of looking at them. The first one is what you're looking at the screen now. Uh, that's when it talks about um, uh, ordering fractions that that have the same denominator. If you look at what examples that we have on the screen, we have all denominators are the same. It's just the numerators that are different. So ordering fractions here is based on the same denominator. And it's the simplest, for me, it's the simplest way to compare fractions. It's like sitting for a test of 26 questions. It's very easy to see that the person that has uh, 25 over 26 he has the greatest uh, score in that test. So that's what we have here now. If you have a 5 over 26, 15 over 26, 17 over 26, 19 over 26, and 25 over 26, you can easily tell that the person that has the highest numerator score is has the best score. That is it. So uh, when denominators are the same in a fraction, all you need to do is order their numerators. All you need to do is order their numerators. So the smallest will be 5 over 26. The next one will be 15 over 26. The next one, 17 over 26. And 19 over 26. Then finally, 25 over 26. In this way, this is the way you order fractions in ascending order. Ascending order talks about from the least to the greatest, from the smallest to the largest value. Okay, good. So now let's look at it again. Now look at this now. We have a um, descending order now. Descending order coming down in value. So that's a way to look at it. Some have known uh, purpose to over the years to uh, interchange these when it comes to assessment. But do not forget there's a formula you could use D for down. Okay, descending order talks about coming down in value so you start with the greatest in descending order not the smallest you start with the greatest that's 25 over 26 then you move all the way down to 5 over 26 remember this is easy when we're talking about same denominator fractions it's very easy to, to to grade them to order them to compare them just look at them as a test uh, and uh, people getting different kind of scores so it's easy to order and compare same denominator fractions let's move on and see what's next now these are not same denominator fractions these are same numerator fractions these are same numerator fractions aha it's a different thing altogether now um how do we look at this without any calculations yes you can still look at these ones without any calculations now let me give you a a, a clue now when we have um same numerator uh, fractions uh, that you want to compare you can still look at them uh, uh, as a, a series of tests uh one pupil but many tests okay so imagine a pupil uh sitting for test in, in, in let's say assessment in five different subjects for instance uh, in, in in the first subject it's called uh, one over eleven in the second subject it's called one over eight in the third subject one over five next one one over four and another one one over three so what you need to do in this situation, if the numerator are same, is to find out how many questions are missed. The more questions you miss, the lower your score in that so in, in that particular subject. So now in this first one, one over ten, one over eleven rather. If someone has a score of one over eleven in a test, this particular person missed ten questions. Can you see that now? Remember, do not forget you can only use this kind of analysis if you are talking about same numerator uh, fractions. You can't use this in any other situation. Remember, we've talked about same denominator fractions. That's pretty easy. Now, an extended level is same numerator uh, or, or fractions, comparing them, ordering them. You need to look at it like how many questions do I miss? Okay, if you score one over eleven in a test, you miss ten questions. If you score one over eight in a test, you miss seven questions. If you score one over five, you miss four questions. If you score one over four, you miss eight questions. 
If it's called one over three, you miss two questions. Like, you might ask me, isn't that a weird way of or ordering fractions without calculations? Yes, it is. Uh, and so, you know, sometimes you, you don't really have to uh, put pen to paper to be able to analyze things. You need to be able to think on your feet. And this is a strategy I devised a long time ago when I was at your level. I was able to look at it and tell myself, okay, good. So if they are the same numerator, all you need to do is uh, find out how many questions were missed and look at them as uh, subject scores for a particular pupil in a, a, a certain assessment. Okay, beautiful. So if you miss 10 questions, definitely that's a bad score. So it, it has the lowest value. If you miss several questions, it is better than missing 10 questions, definitely. If you miss four questions here, one over five, it's better than missing seven questions. If you miss three questions, here is where they're missing four questions and on and on. So the, the smallest to the greatest value can easily be, 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 be deciphered from here. So we call this ascending order. This is the least value and this is the highest value. Though the denominator here is the smallest, okay? Though the denominator here is the smallest. There's something else you, you will learn much later. We'll call inverse, in, inverse value, okay? The smaller the denominator in this case, the bigger the value of the fraction. The smaller the denominator, the bigger the fraction. Okay, good. So that's another thing to put in mind and try to reason it, reason about. Now let's look at it in descending order now. In descending order, definitely we are starting with uh, with one over three. Okay, we are starting with one over three. Remember what I said: the smaller the denominator, the bigger the value of the so if you are looking at descending order, you start with the one that has the smallest denominator because it has the largest value of fraction. So smallest denominator, largest value of fraction. Okay, good. So remember, this only applies when we are talking about same numerator fractions. Thank you very much. So let's move on. So this is the largest value and this is the smallest value. Remember, the sm smaller the denominator, the larger the value of the fraction. Thank you very much. Remember, only for same numerator fractions. It, it will take some practice, okay? Uh, let's go. And feel free to watch this video once I post it on GC over and over again. Uh, when looking at um, other fractions that are totally unrelated, denominators are not the same, numerators are not the same, that's a different game. You need to really, really pay attention or watch the video a couple of times to make it stick. Now, look at this. Now, we want to order 3 over 10, 1 over 2, 19 over 25, and 17 over 20. Now, it's already ordered in ascending order, okay? It has been, the, the fractions have been arranged in ascending order right here from the smallest in value to the greatest in value. But how can you prove this? I'm going to show you how to imagine if the fractions have been scattered and they've all been given to you and you don't know which is which. What do we do? Take them one after the other, okay? Look for, you can start with 1 over 2, you can start with 19 over 25, you can start with 3 over 10. But this time, because we already know the order, I'm going to start with 3 over 10. I'm going to show you how to uh, make all of them have the same denominator. You will need to take them all to the same denominator. What do I mean? You need to take the, all these denominators to 100. And there's a, an easy way uh, to, to do this, uh, to compare factions that have no 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 similar uh, numbers at all digits at all they are the numerators are not the same the denominators are the same the easiest way to do that is to convert these to percentages my oh my how do you convert fractions to percentages the same way your teachers convert your scores in your tests or assessments to percentages so what are we going to do to turn fractions to percentages that's the major thing we are looking at now turning fractions to percentages let me show you the first step you need to multiply the fraction itself by 100 over 1 look at it now we have 3 over 10 it is right here the only thing i did is to multiply it by 100 over 1 and that's the same thing you will do for all these other fractions when it's their time but first i'm looking at 3 over 10 what do we do with 3 over 10 times 100 over 1 you can easily multiply the 3 and the 100 
as an approach. So guess what? 3 times 100 gives you 300. 10 times 1 gives you 10. Let's see. Exactly. 300 over 10. That works, isn't it? Okay, good. Yes, that works. So what do we do at this stage? Now remember, in a previous video, I told you when you have terminal zeros in your fractions. Terminal zeros, that means zeros are end uh, either the numerator or the denominator. We have terminal zeros here. This question, uh, fraction has two terminal zeros actually, but this one has only one. The numerator has two terminal zeros. The denominator has only one. So we are only going to remove one uh, terminal zero from numerator and denominator. So we move this terminal zero here and remove this terminal zero here. Okay, one from the top and one from the bottom. So what are we going to be left with? Thirty over one. Do you know what thirty over one is? over 1 is just 30. Any number divided by 1 is the same number, okay? So that gives you 30%. Remember I told you we were turning the fraction to a percentage, okay? I'll quickly run over this again. Uh, 3 over 10 times 100 over 1. Why did we do times 100 over 1? That is the way to turn a fraction into a percentage. There's a clue there, okay? Don't forget that. The way how to turn a fraction to a percentage is to multiply by 100 over 1. Keep that and don't lose it. If that's the only thing you learned today, keep it. So, to turn a fraction to a percentage, you multiply by 100 over 1. Multiply the numerators together, you get 300. Multiply the denominators together in this case, you get 10. There are terminal zeros. 1 terminal 0 up, we cancel 1 terminal 0 down. We are left with 30 over 1, and 30 over 1 is the same thing as 30%. Let's write it down on the right. So, 30% get rid of this working let's work with one over two the same process times 100 over one multiply numerators together one times 100 gives you 100 two times one gives you two how many two can you get in 100 can you share 100 into two equal places your guess is as good as mine 50 yes 50 it is how did i how can you actually get 50 it's very easy how many two can you get in 10 Okay, 600 is a big number, isn't it? Let's work with 10 first. But don't forget, we still have the 0 left. So, how many 2 in 10? That gives you 5. Write it down. Then the next thing, how many 2 can you get in 0? 0 is smaller than 2. Definitely, the other is 0. You write it down beside the 5. You now have 50. Okay, beautiful. Let's write it down on the right. That is done. Let's do the next one. Aha! Now we have 19 over 25. This is a huge number. Oh, should we go ahead and say 19 times 100? Mm, it's good to give us a big number. I am, I am scared of huge numbers. Okay, so what do we do? Let us simplify before we multiply, isn't it? Okay, good. So, how many 25 can I get in 100? Okay, if you understand a little bit of numeracy, you know that 25 plus 25 gives you 50. Plus the third 25 gives you 75. Plus the fourth 25. 25 gives you 100. So there are 425s in 100, isn't it? Okay, let's see. So good. So I've got rid of my 25. Now the 100 has turned to 4 because there are 425s in 100. So I'm going to have 19 times 4 over 1. Remember that 1 is essentially this one, okay? This 25 is gone. And this one has turned to, this 100 has turned to 4 because 25. In 100 is 4. There are 4 25s in 100. So no more 25, no more 100, but the 100 is now 4 because there are 4 25s in 100. So 4 here at the top. 90 times 4, 76. 76%. Let's get rid of that and write it on the right. Okay, good. Finally, 17 over 20. Good. The same process with the last one. Each number, how many 20 can I get in 100? Uh huh. Did you say 4? No, it's not 4. Oh, uh, no. Uh, it's not 25. You know, 25 times 4 gives you 100. So that's why we use 4 the other time. So 20 times what gives you 100? 20 times what gives you 100? Okay, you know 2 times 5 gives you 10, right? So 20 times 5 gives you 100. So how many 20 in 100? That's a 5. So you already, your guess is as good as mine. Next line should be 70 times 5 over 1. That one is essentially this one. Okay beautiful okay so we're moving on okay this one is essentially this one okay 
we are moving on. We are almost there. Yes. And so then five is 85. That's why this is 85%. You can see it now. Okay, good. So we have successfully proved that 3 over 10 is smaller than 1 over 2, and which is also smaller than 19 over 25, which is smaller than 17 over 20. Okay, good. So that's ascending order from the least to the greatest. From the smallest fraction to the largest fraction in value. Now, descending order is just a reverse of that. Descending order is just a reverse of that. And that is what is showing here. Thank you, boys and girls. See you next time around.